Okay, g'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go through the plans that I used to make the cockpit and uh, where I got them and how I made the panel plans. Um, the number one question I get asked on social media and on um, the forums is how much it cost. I'll cover that in another video that I'm planning. Uh, the number two question I get asked is where did you get the plans and can I have them? Uh, so before I started this cockpit, I did a whole bunch of research for months before I started making anything. Um, good sources of information are obviously the DCS forums, the sub forum for input and output and the um, home cockpit forum is a great place to get information. There's a whole bunch of people making builds. The other best source of information was Viper Pits. Viper Pits, even though they concentrate on F-16, some of the um, information and ideas you get from here are unbelievable. These guys have been making F-16 pits since Falcon 4.0 back in the 90s, and like they make, they make my cockpit look like it's amateurish, some of these ones on this site. Um, for example, there's one, I can't find the forum now, but there's one where there's a guy who's got the whole front fuselage of a tornado and put it in his empty indoor swimming pool in his house and has turned it into a flight simulator. So make sure you go and check out this forum, join up, and you get lots of info. Now, these forums all have some free plans. In their download section on Viper Pits, you'll find right. that there's a whole bunch of things. You can get stickers, templates that people have done up themselves and made into and made publicly available stencil kits, reactor one panels, I'll get into that later. Uh, this is all mostly F-16 based, but it's a good it's a good source of information and you learn a lot. Um, now over on the ED forums, you'll find that there is a whole bunch, the same thing, a whole bunch of people have already made plans that you don't need to pay for. Uh, Dimebug has made plans, as you can see here, you can download links, I'll link all this into the, in the description. Um, but you can see the CAD representations of his cockpit. They're pretty epic. There's a guy on YouTube right now, um, Craig at mysimpit.co. He's in the process of building this setup right now. So if you're enjoying mine, go and look at his too. He goes into a lot more detail than I do. Um, this cockpit, though, wasn't suited to my needs because it's designed, you can see it's designed for real gauges and separate MFDs, uh, screens for the MFDs and that sort of stuff. Um, also... I, this is designed for you to cut out by hand and all make yourself, which is great. It keeps the cost down, but I just didn't have the time to do that. I wanted mine to be um, just CNC cut for me so I could get the parts done and get it done quickly. Um, this would have taken a lot more effort, but at the end of the day, it looks brilliant. There's another set of plans on here released by Han Solo and Deadman. Who, so Deadman is a bloke on the forums who has a real A10A trainer, and he measured up everything perfectly so the most accurate plans out there for an exact replica of an a10 will be this one again this came out when i was i had I'd almost completed my cockpit by the time this came out what i ended up using are these ones right here i bought my plans from a bloke called flim on at vrpits.com um, and you can see on his website he sells the plans that's the a10 complete for 75 dollars um you can also buy the ejection seat on its own and the front console on its own for 30 bucks and the two consoles on their own for 30 bucks. He also sells some um, STL files to to extend your warthog. Um, this is what I ended up purchasing just because it was perfect for my needs and it was um, cheap. for, for the, the price is very reasonable for how much work you put into making these. So what you do is you go on the website, buy the plans, and he'll email you a link to the download. When you get them downloaded, this happened, I bought these a very long time ago, so you have to bear with me. I don't think you get them in this exact format, um, but I've changed all the plans a lot. Basically, you get a whole bunch of files for each part of the cockpit, as well as a free CAD diagram of it, um, a program so you can see exactly what it looks like. Okay, so when you open up your um, free CAD, this is the files you'll get. Um, this is the ejection seat, obviously. Um, so the DXF files will laser cut you all the parts for this. You don't get in instructions per se, you just get this file and it sort of obviously helps you see where each part goes or you have to you so you can delete panels and see what's underneath them and then you'll work it out it's pretty self-explanatory um 
Mine didn't stray from the design of this seat very much at all. The only thing I edited was how these parts here are two separate bits. I made that one, and the same for the sides here. I made that one large piece for a bit of strength. Um, if I was doing this again, I would fill in these holes in these panels, the large oval ones. They're on the real ejection seat, they're not supposed to be holes, they're supposed to be like strengthening ribs. I ended up filling them in with my own little bits of um, MDF and all of the holes drilled in the side here, in these panels here, are rivets in the real seat. Um, I ended up filling them in myself with um, putty when I got to the painting stage so I could um, put rivets in there instead of having holes. You could use holes I suppose if you're going to use screws as rivets but I use upholstery nails and I edited um, this section in here I bolstered up with wood to make it look a bit better and I the biggest thing I edited was the headrest system um, this bit here I ended up just taking those two bits off and making my own sort of on the fly in the garage and if you look at my ejection seat video you'll see what I did for the seat here this works but it's just very very uncomfortable obviously sitting on a hard bit of wood um, uh, and so the ejection handles, I used these ejection handles, I just added detail on the side of them um, with another bit of laser cut wood. Uh, the other files you'll get are the, sorry where am I, this is the glare shield, it sits on top of the main instrument panel um, with the fire handles resting in, in between these bits here, sort of in there if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that one's easy. The only difference I made was I didn't put these holes in the top there. I'm not really sure what the purpose of those was, but I didn't put them in there. Uh, is the left console, you can see it's the, exactly the same design that I used. Um, I didn't edit very much on this at all. The only thing I did edit, sorry, I'm not used to using FreeCAD. Um, uh, I just put skin on the outside so you can hide all those ribs and it hides all your cabling and what else did I change on here? Uh, this um, this panel in here I changed. I they, they have it designed as it's one big flat unit. I ended up um, actually deleting that and recessing it back in line with that there um, if that makes sense. Just in there mine is so there's a bit of a rib sort of design going on. Um, if you do have it like that, your f panel sitting on that will be flush up against this panel, if that makes sense. And I didn't want them to be flush, I wanted them to be um, a little bit of a gap there. Uh, I also deleted the holes drilled in that panel there, um, so I could add them myself um, with, with my design of radios. So you also get the front panel, this is the front um, instrument panel. The biggest edits I did on this one compared to the original one, I'll show you in the DXF later, is to the main instrument panel itself. I um, made a whole bunch of changes um, to incorporate my... So this is the only sort of raised instrument panel you get in this file. I wanted mine to be a bit more realistic, so I edited up, sorry, ended up adding more bits of wood and more layers to make it a bit more realistic. Um, and I also cut different holes in here and edit it a little bit to fix my sort of just to suit my needs um, you can see that the holes cut in this instrument panel are large for the full size uh, MFDs in an A10 not these um, not these Cougar MFDs these are representations of the Thrustmaster Cougar so you have to make an adapter panel to make that fit on top of that or just stick it direct to your monitor i made an adapter panel and i cut the large holes because i intend to make my own mfds later i also edited this panel here mine doesn't have that um sort of bow in it anymore it's flush with this panel here it's just a straight section uh, and if you turn around the back here you'll see that sorry again bear with me i'm not a free cad sort of person um I added it at a large tunnel on here, like you'll, if you look at my MIP um, video, you'll see the difference I made behind here, just to make it a tunnel for the rudder pedals. I also, um, you'll see that this this panel here, for some reason, my rudder pedals would want to be right down the bottom there, as far back as possible, and it was failing, so I ended up hacking it up completely and making my own section for that. Um, 
All right, and then you'll see the A10 complete. So this is basically Flim's plans if you made it by the book. This is what you'd end up with. You can see it's pretty epic. Um, I, look, all of the edits I made were unnecessary. Like, you could build this... You could send this off to a laser cutter or a service that can cut it for you. Maybe you got your own CNC machine, cut it, and you'd end up with a very, very awesome cockpit. Um, it just... I edited it only to suit my needs that's it and um to be a little bit more realistic but i'm pretty sure that if you were sitting in this playing dcs you'd be a happy man because i certainly am in mine um all right so now that we've looked at sort of that i will show you the dxf files and the edits i made and then i'll go on to the actual panels Okay, so what I'll go over now is the um, DXF files you get when you buy these plans. Um, bear with me, I just realised that I hadn't had, I didn't have Coral Draw installed on this computer, so I just had to do it. Um, so, for example, I open up the front ones. The the file names are I've changed um, them, but these files I'm about to show you are the original ones that you'll get. Um, I've just retitled them. So if I open that up, uh, this bit's important. You have to make sure, obviously, that you select it English. One unit's one inch, not one millimetre, otherwise your scalings will all be off. Uh, and this is the file that you get. So it's a DXF file. It's designed to go straight into a um, CNC machine and it'll cut out your panels. Um, from memory, I think it's designed so like the brown is runs the tool on the outside and the blue runs the tool on the inside so you get good cuts. Um, I've never used a CNC machine before because I don't have one and I've never used one. Um, I've got a laser so I don't really have to worry about inside and outside cuts because it's a laser beam. Um, so this is the original ones. You can see this is the front console. Everything in this would be cut out of 6mm um, thick MDF and then the other file is the 12mm MDF parts. Again, make sure it's in English. And that's the side of the floor and that, that's the, um, the front panel part. Um, so basically if you cut this out of 12mm MDF and you cut this out of 6mm MDF you'd have enough to make that unit right there um, exactly as you see it. So now what I'll do is I'll show you the one that this is my one that I've edited. Um, the, most of this is the same. I ch changed the glare shield a little bit because I cut the, the bit out of the back and that sort of stuff for it but um, Obviously, the big changes I made are this part here in mine. Um, if I go back to the original, you can see that their main instrument panel is a little bit less um, involved than my one. I cut the actual gauges out. I made this part here for my um, AHCP, and I made all the screw holes in it, sorry, the bolt holes, so I could bolt the panels on, and these bits are the bits that pile up on top of that to... Um, give it width if you know what I mean that gets bolted on there and then this bit here gets bolted on there and it ends up being um, thick uh, uh, so the original design also has this little cutout here you can see on my one I deleted that um, that part uh, that is designed because this this is designed for a 27 inch monitor to sit behind it inside its casing still so this hole would give you access to the buttons to turn your monitor on I removed my panel from the from the um, monitor so I don't need buttons because I don't have them I've actually mounted them somewhere else and I never use them anyway because it auto turns on as soon as it gets a HDMI signal so basically I sent I opened these DXF files, I edited what I wanted to and then I sent them off to a company who had a large CNC machine and cut them out for me. So these plans are designed to be cut out on a CNC machine but it would not be that hard to open them up, edit them around so you can fit them on large paper and get them printed on paper. That would cost much, much less and then you could use it as a template and cut it all out by hand. Um, most of these parts are all just square angles so look things like this you just open it in coral drawer you can see the dimensions and then you can cut you can cut um that yourself out of wood look realistically the only hard bit to cut out would be this part um because it's so involved but if you just took your time and you had the right um drill bits you could do all this by hand 
or you could cut that out separately. So I'll just show you the seat. So if you open up the seat, these are the actual original um, files that you get, the DXF files. So you can see that he's got them in two files here, 0.25 inch thick wood and 0.47 inch thick wood. So there's two different files, open them up in English. And he's written just here that your blue are your inside cuts and your red are 0.125 drill holes. Um, look, it comes with a PDF that gives you a basic explanation of what to tell the person who's cutting this out for you or what to set your own machine at. Um, so basically all you'd need to do is open up that, open up that. So this file and this file, if you sent them off to a laser cutting service, when you got it back you would have everything you need to build that exactly as you see it. Um, all the holes line up and it's just, yeah, it's a good looking seat if you ask me. And then if you opened up all of the files you get, you end up with this bad boy. So that is the plans for the actual physical structure of the cockpit. What I'll go into now is the plans for each panel. Okay, so when I first started this project five years ago, it was literally a box, a button box, and it evolved into a crazy project. Um, I started that back in the day using some panels that I found online and are still available now from a bloke called Reactor One. So he created these panels which are in PDF format, which are basically designed to be printed out on paper and then you can use them as templates or you can cut them yourself. You can see how he set it up. So that's obviously an AHCP and it's brilliant. So the only problem that I found with Reactor One's panels were that they the dimensions were off. Um, they weren't 100% accurate. So what I ended up doing was creating my own panels um, from scratch, basically. I used the dimensions that I found online and I ended up with a panel that would be the exact same size, the exact external size, so the outlet line of it and the mounting holes would be in the exact same position as the real aircraft. Um, I did that because Flim's plans, the console is sized for the real ones and they weren't sized for the Reactor 1 panels. And also the Reactor 1 panels had some issues where the font wasn't correct and some of the switches were in the wrong spot and that sort of thing. So I just started from scratch on the whole cockpit and I made my own panels. All of these panels I've made available, I've saved them in a public Dropbox. I'll give you the link in this video and you can discuss them on the forums as well. There's a, there's a um, thread about them. Um, I'm actually in the process of making a poster at the moment where I've basically combined every single panel and I'm going to hang this on my pit room wall and it's sort of an exact representation of my cockpit, not an exact representation of the A-10. So all the panels are the ones that I've used and all the... I've just stitched them all together so they make the full cockpit. So when you open up my um, panels, you'll get it in a design where you can easily um, open it up in Coral Draw or whatever program you want. It's all saved as vectors, not as a bitmap. So all the information will still be there. Um, and I haven't embedded the text. It should show up as text when you open it, not as a, a curve. Um, so I've sort of saved it. You can see that's the, the front panel, that's the middle spacer, that's the rear panel, and there's the indicators. And I've also saved the... Uh, oh, I actually ended up getting this cut as a sticker by a local um, sign writing shop. They cut that out of vinyl and it came out so it sits in there perfectly. I've saved that as well. And because I'm making that poster, I've also made that coloured version at the back. So you can you can print these uh, and the scaling will be one-to-one -one, and you can also print that last page only and you'll have like a, um, a coloured placeholder if that's the way you want to make your pit. Um, even if you're just sticking that on top of a button box and drawing the holes for switches, you could do that. It would still be pretty cool. Um, and I've got the entire cockpit, um, including, you can see how I've broken it down. I've, I've also included the, um, the CDU and the auxiliary avionics panel in the same format. It's obviously a bit more complex because there's buttons and a whole bunch of different spaces and that sort of stuff. That's the LED backplate. That's the main panel. There's the front of the AAP and there's the coloured version. Um, so you can see by my design how those two were stuck together. Um, and I've added those function buttons. Anyway, I, I digress. Um, so the answer to that question that I always get asked is, where'd you get the plans? Now you know. And the answer to the question, can I have them? 
For this one here, the answer is no, obviously. I paid for them and I suggested if you want them, you pay for them too because um, Flim did a lot of work on them and they turned out really, really good. Um, even if you didn't make the edits I did and you just print them out or get them cut as he has and put it together, you'll end up with a pretty sick looking cockpit. Um, each individual panel, however, I'm absolutely happy to share that. I'll link to the description and, um, sorry, I'll put a link in the description of where you can go to download them off my Dropbox and feel free to use them and print them and do whatever you want with them. Um, anyway, that's where I'll end this video. I hope I've answered, uh, I've answered a few questions. If you have any more, throw them the questions in the comments down below and I'll, um, I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.